I'm just wanting to explain why I don't treat. One of the obvious reasons is not having chemicals ending up in your wax and honey. Researchers in the USA have shown multiple pesticides accumulate in beeswax and at least two of them are put into beehives by beekeepers. So beekeepers are responsible for contaminating their wax. Now I don't know, use any treatment so it means my wax is relatively uncontaminated although it is theoretically possible for pesticides to come from the environment and end up in my wax. That's just one side of it. The other side is the one more important to me. Although the Varroa mite is a new pest on the European honeybee, it's only come to Britain during the 1990s, I believe that in the long term the bee and the mite will co-evolve to uh, to be able to tolerate each other and, and live in a kind of balance. Of course it will require the bee to be healthy. So anything you do to uh, damage the mite, kill the mite or remove the mite is postponing the day when the bee and the mite will co-adapt or co-evolve into a stable situation of host and parasite. The same applies to anything you do to help the bee to cope with the parasite. So any intervention to me is just um, a waste of time. It's postponing the day when you won't have to use any chemicals at all. So I went what people are calling in beekeeping cold turkey, stop using any treatment. The last time I treated a hive was in the January in 2009, that was my frame hives, and I've never treated my worry hives, which were started in 2007. And over the years, my year-on-year -year losses, they are high, 24%, but they are tolerable. So I will accept that, and I believe that in the longer term, that percentage loss rate will drop. Interestingly, we have every year a survey of local beekeepers and their winter losses. And last winter, uh, there were eight beekeepers who were doing treatment. Uh, they had 41% losses. And there were a further 46 beekeepers who responded to the survey who were not doing any treatment whatsoever, and they had 32% losses. Whether that's statistically significant, I don't know. It's considerably less though. And we had in a previous year um, much lower losses in the winter, only around 7%, and it was the same for both groups. The treaters and the non-treaters had 7% losses. So it seems to me that already uh, it's possible for beekeepers of any type, these were mostly frame beekeep beekeepers, they weren't just natural beekeepers, they weren't just worry beekeepers. It seems possible for beekeepers of any type to stop using treatments and possibly accept higher losses, but in the long term uh, to end up with a stable host parasite relationship. This is of course against um, official advice in this country, in the United Kingdom, where they say you must treat all the while, or you will lose your bees in at the very most three years, usually much earlier than that. But my oldest hive is now uh, passed through seven seasons, so obviously that's proving them wrong on that. Putting chemicals in the hive doesn't just can't contaminate your hive products. The honeybee is susceptible to some of the uh, miticides, or caricides, or varroicides that are used. Um, it's just trade-off against the damage to the bee and the damage to the mite. Um, apistan damages the bee, thymol damages the bee, oxalic acid damages the bee. So even the soft miticides are damaging. But worse still, because some of these actors are kind of antiseptic, they seriously disrupt the microbiological environment in the hive. And bees hugely depend on the other organisms, the microorganisms in the hive for a healthy ecology of their hive and for the health of their young and for the health of themselves. For instance, there are lactobacilli in the bee crop which are part of the process of converting nectar into honey. So you, any chemicals, harmful chemicals you put in will disrupt this process 
and put a kind of physiological stress on the bee.